himself, and he has his own little ways, in many ways very humorous, but probably one of the hardest working managers that I know. Uh, since Tom and I haven't been together since 19... I'm being talking about in business since 1953, but we've even become better friends. He stays in California all the time, and every time I go there, I see him. And How did he operate? Because a lot of people... I've heard a lot of people knock some of his tactics, you know, and I've heard other people say he's an absolute genius the way he, he is. I'm going to tell you something about that, though, <clears throat> Mike. I... This is something the public doesn't really know much about. But I have never met a good manager that wasn't criticized. I have a good manager now, Jerry Purcell, and often I hear people come up and say, you know, that's so-and-so, but he is the buffer. Yeah, there always has to be, when a guy is as nice as an Eddie Arnold, seriously, in this business, He's got to have a guy who kind of plays the part of the heavy. Am I right? He always has to be the because heavy. Because you can't, I don't think you could do that. I don't think you could no. say, no, get out of here. And oh, I can't if I get mad. I can't. Can you? Well, yeah. maybe but, so. Uh, but I, that's really not what I'm talking about. I'm not really, I'm uh, talking about business now. I'm talking about dealing with people, making deals, good business deals for their artist. They have to be a good negotiator, a good bargainer, a horse trader, you know, because we can't sell ourselves. True. We can't go to the network or the sponsors and say, hey, man, I'm good. They say, well, who does he think he is? But the manager say, hey, my artist, you know. He's the boy he's, for he's, you. He's the boy. He can sell the merchandise, and he's good. But we can't do that. So we have to have. It's very important for an artist. I don't care how good he is or how much talent. First of all, he's got to have some common horse sense. Yeah, you've got to know what's right or you, and wrong for you. But are you, you have a good to judge have a, of that? Yeah, you've got to have a good manager. Yeah, but it's, are you a good judge of what's right or wrong for you? I think I am. Yes, I think I am. I, I, I always, uh, I'm not, I don't always have quick snap judgment, but I take it all. I take, try to take the good part of a deal that's handed to me and the bad part and go off alone and say, now here are the bad points. And here's what'll happen to me if I do that. And, and now here are the plus side. Here's the plus side of it now. Uh, should I do it or shouldn't? And I try to weigh it that way. Because you make so many mistakes in this business. You know, when, when you get a little lucky, all of a sudden things come your way and you, you're inclined to kind of jump at them because they're the and things you, you've been waiting for. You want to try to ride the way, but you shouldn't. You, you shouldn't hit a happy medium and, you know, put a little of it away and... Because you won't always be popular, boy, you, there's going to come a day. I don't care how popular you get. There'll come a day, finally, you're going to be colder than Job's turkey. <laughs> and, 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 and then you got to, you know, just go home and make love to mama. <laughs> Can't be all bad then, can it? Well, I like uh, it pretty worry, good. Do you, do you worry about that? About not making love to mama? I mean, but not I mean, as long as she's willing. <laughs> do you worry about... The cooling off point, Eddie. Sometimes. Do you? But not as much. Because you now. enjoy your popularity, don't you? I do, and I enjoy my privacy. Uh, I oh certainly. I think I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you. I think about it. I I think I'll miss it. But I think I've reached the age that I won't miss it as much. Mm -hmm. I've learned to live with myself, you know, and I think that's very important. The you man's got to be at peace with himself. You bet your life. And uh, so I have enough, even if I stop today or tomorrow, I have enough hobbies and enough interests that I could keep myself busy and I could enjoy my life. You see, I worked with a, with a guy at one time in my life, and I admire him for this. In fact, I admire him a great deal. He was at the very peak. He was number one. And he said, that's it. And he was 46 years old when he said that. Oh, boy, that's... I takes a lot of, a lot of doing. That's Kay Kaiser. He oh, just... I saw him a few months Did ago. Did you? How is he? You know, My really old I'd, boss. Well, bless his heart, I had never met him. And I was on a plane flying from Raleigh, North Carolina to... He Nashville. lives in Chapel Hill, so... Well, he works for some religious outfit down there. And, he, and, he to, and I talked to him all the way into to Nashville on the plane. He really enjoyed it. He's a wonderful He's man. He's br brilliant. Very oh, nice, yeah. man. We talked about you. We talked about Ishkabibble. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the air conditioning I see on again today, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. 
Have you, ever, have you ever turned down a situation that, that you've regretted? Because most of us have. Uh, you tell me about one, and if you like, I'll tell you about one. I turned down raindrops falling on my head. <laughs> well, then I'm not telling you mine, because it, it can't possibly reach that one. I'm Did not going to take all. That? No, I'm not going to turn <laughs> it all down. The A&R man at RCA talked me out of it. Oh. I wanted to do it. Why? Because Bert Backrack sent it said, hey, you know, I would have been the he first. He gave you the tune? He gave it to me, and I took it in the a &R man. He said, Eddie, I don't believe you ought to do this. <laughs> oh. I said, oh. I said, it's a good song. I hope B.J. Thomas is listening. I bet he's happy by the fact you turn it down. Well, Gosh, you, what a hit. You can't have it all. What a hit. And we, uh, to continue to uh, keep this whole thing up, we got to pause right here. <laughs> You know, it's hard to believe that someone as young as our next guest could have such a long and successful career behind her. Really, this little girl was singing on this show and making hit records when she was in school, you know, and we kind of watched her grow up. In the past eight years, we've, we've watched her career grow, and uh, I've seen her on other shows, and I'm always kind of proud, you know, to see somebody develop like that. And I saw her backstage, and she is not wearing hot pants. <laughs> these new styles, these new styles, not only are, are they earth-shaking, but... Uh, she's earth-shaking. This, this, she's a very, very pretty and talented young lady, and uh, her mother's with her today. Is she? That always, oh. it always kills me when I see, uh, see that, because a lot of people think that's old-fashioned. I think it's beautiful. Oh, I do. Know. Sometimes a mama's good-looking as a daughter. <laughs> Here is, <laughs> here, is that. here is probably somewhat embarrassed Miss Leslie Gore. <laughs> Got my bed back together. 
Cause you are a friend of mine Cause you are a friend of mine We can do it anytime We can do it anytime Cause you are a friend of mine We can get it on together Leslie Gore. Right here? Young. You should add young to that. Young, handsome. How do you like the, lo the world's longest sweater? Hey. Eddie, this used to be Eddie, a waist thing, you know. Eddie said... And I hung it over the shower one night after I washed it. You're kidding. And I rolled it right down. You're kidding, of yes. course. Because Eddie, Eddie commented on it. He said, I like her dress. Now, is that handmade? The yes, hand it is. There. Who made it? You it didn't was, make it, did you? No, I wish I had the talent to make this. A young lady in uh, New York made it for me. Her name is Ilka Suarez. And Pretty. I get a lot of my clothes there, and uh, she does a beautiful job. I, I saw her. I, I wasn't kidding. I saw her backstage, and I told her, I said, no, that's smart. That's, that's good. I like that. Thank As you. we say down home, that do make it nice. That's <laughs> <laughs> what they say down home. <laughs> that's your new record, isn't it? Yes, that's my new record. That do make it nice? No, no, what she just said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, yeah, that, that could be her new record. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah. I can't. What's it's the name of it? Called? It's called Back Together. What's the name? Back Together. Oh, good. <laughs> Who wrote it? Your brother? No, I wish he had. <laughs> her brother, her her brother writes a lot of songs. Oh, oh I see. Indeed. None of my relatives ever write. Only for money. <laughs> Postcards and stuff. <laughs> and I wish Michael had written this. He's writing great now. He's studying music up at Yale and doing real well. But this was written by Bob Crew, who produces oh, yes, my yes. records. And it's kind of a, it's a story, really. It's Actually, good. I worked with Bob in 65, and we had a couple of hit songs together. And uh, it's kind of a story of how we got back together after so many years. Didn't he, wasn't he, uh, before he got into the production end, wasn't he a singer? Oh, yes. Bob's been everything, I think. He's a fantastically handsome man. I think he acted at one time. I think he modeled at one time. And he tried to sing for a long time. Now, here's a name, <laughs> here's a name you hear and, and you pay no yeah. attention to. <clears throat> But he's a multi-millionaire, that young fellow you're talking about. I think about. he'd, yes, I think he'd be a marvelous guest on the program. He would. He do, produces records not only for you, but for a lot oh, of people. Oh, a lot of people. He's had so many hit songs. I, and he, he wrote, he, he's a writer, too, excuse me. And he let's wrote, go right ahead, can't, love, what, your what, spot. Can't Take My Eyes Off You? <laughs> can't Take My Eyes Off You? He's one of his biggies. He I wrote did, that. Did he write that? I you're thought, just too I good thought to the fellow with the Four Seasons wrote that. He wrote it. May have been in the Four Seasons. Bob Gordio and Bob Bob Gordio, yeah. Yes. Have you ever turned down, did you hear what this man said about turning down raindrops? Have you ever done that? I really didn't turn it down. I got talked out of it. Ah, uh, now it's stories changing, yeah. folks. I'll take back my plaque. <laughs> you got talked no, out of it. Yeah, he said, I don't think you ought to do that. <laughs> Is I, that I'm fella still around and said that, Eddie? Yeah, he's still, still at RCA, I bet. <laughs> what did you turn down? Long contract. It was a song that, it happened that it got into the top ten, but it was something like a... A teenager goes to the hop type thing, and I, I didn't love it. And even when it became a top ten song, I didn't love it. So I didn't feel too badly about it. You know, you look marvelous on camera. Thank you. you. you uh, Leslie has well, this the is kind of eyes that color television loves, right? You do a close shot of Leslie's eyes. Oh. Huh? And she have pretty eyes? <laughs> They're, they're green, too, but, aren't they? Yes. How much do you weigh? I weigh 89 pounds. <laughs> That's well, on a, a rainy day. <laughs> a dress like this, you, you can't pounds. exactly afford to gain any pounds in a dress like this. What's the most you Because they come through the holes, Leslie. then. I, um, <laughs> what, what comes through the holes? The fatty the tissue? The would come through the holes. It would look very ugly. I once weighed... In <laughs> fact, when I started on this program, I was a chunky little kid. You I remember. I saw you heavy once. I was 107 pounds at one time. 107? 